A multi-state box is one of the newer elements that Wix has introduced inside of the Wix editor. It is very popular amongst Wix users to create interactive content, such as tab design. You know, those where you click a button and it switches the content to show you something different. Sometimes people use them for multi-step registrations or other multi-step data collection. The majority of my clients like to use the multi-state box for timed content. This way, it is easy for them to design multiple slides with content that will automatically change depending on what day of the month, what time of day, or a very specific date of the year. Even though a multi-state box works best with a little bit of code, you can still use it without adding any code at all. You can still create your designs and then manually change them via the editor. If you do add code, the most popular way of interacting with the multi-state box is by adding a button so visitors can click on it or hover over it. Remember, the hover does not exist on a mobile device, so make sure you still learn how to code the click function. Now, if you're interested in learning how to use the multi-state boxes in combination with the timed code, be sure to check out my other tutorial on my YouTube page. But before you go, remember to watch this video to learn how to create the code for a multi-state box and then combine it with your timed content code. I want to thank you in advance for liking this video and subscribing to my channel. With your support, I am able to create new content for you to help you on your Wix or Velo journey. Now stick around and I'll show you how to make this multi-state box totally codable. We're going to begin by going into our Wix editor and turning on dev mode so that way we can find the elements that we need for code. Click on the plus sign, look for interactive, and then search for multi-state boxes. You can pick a pre-designed one or you can follow along with a blank multi-state box. Just drag it and drop it onto your page so we can begin designing it. If you just turned on the dev mode, you might have had the page code pop open automatically. Just minimize that so we can keep working. We're going to continue to add some elements. We're actually going to be adding a box to the page. We want to create a tab design function, so we want to simulate that a box is actually there. You can style and design the box however you like. I'm going to be adding text and a paragraph. Now I'm giving the text a little bit of a title just so when we actually do test out the function, we'll know what slide or what state we're actually looking at. I will be using buttons to simulate the tab effect. So I'm going to design it in a way where it actually looks like it's a tab that somebody is clicking. You can add a button to the page. Using the toolbar, you can duplicate and then slightly change the design of the secondary button so it looks like it is not selected. This is just a trick to create the illusion that we have clicked a tab and we're currently looking at a certain tab and the other one is currently not active or not in view. After we finish designing the tabs or buttons that you're going to be using, we're actually going to duplicate the entire state. This is a really neat trick so that way you don't have to add everything all over again and try to figure out what position the other buttons were in. So we're going to click on the state on the top, then click on manage states. Using the dots, I'm going to click duplicate. And then we're going to edit our IDs for the tutorial. 
using the word first and the word second. Basically, the first one is the first section and the second is the second section. When you switch over to the second state, I recommend that you change the color of your buttons once again to simulate that they have selected the other slide. I know I keep calling it slide. They're actually called states. That's why it's called the multi-state box, not the multi-slide box. I'm fixing up the titles in order to test it and make sure that we really are changing to a different section. Now both sections are complete, the first section and the second, and notice that you switch them using the top little tab. I'm actually going to delete a piece of the second section to show you that multi-state boxes are actually responsive. So when you switch back and forth, the section resizes. This is something that slideshows cannot do. I'm going to use the page code at the bottom to change the name of the buttons. You don't need to change all the buttons. We only want to change the ones that we're going to be using in our code. So in the first section, I'm going to click on the button that I labeled second section and for the ID I'm going to call it go to two, the number two. And then on my second state for the second slide, I'm going to label the first button go to one. Now that we're ready to add our code, you can go to the Totally Codable website, go to the tutorial, copy and paste the code here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go to the Velo API page, look for an on-click code, copy it, and then take it back, take it back and place it in my editor. Since I want the users to click on a specific button, I'm going to add that button ID inside the code. And then I'm going to copy it and paste it once again because I actually have two buttons that they're going to be clicking. Now I'm going to go to the Velo API page and get a change state code. So that way when they click the button, it actually changes the state from one to another. I'm going to paste it inside of the on click code for both of the buttons. Now I'm going to get the name of my state box. By clicking on the state box, I can see the ID and I'm going to update both of my state box lines of code with the correct ID for my element that's on the page. Then I'm going to change it to the correct IDs for the states. We labeled it first and second. Let's save our changes and let's hit preview to test out the code. Second, first. Voila! You are done with your tab design.